Thank you. ArcGIS Explorer is a great way for you to provide broad access to your GIS data and also to reach out to new users. And we've been working very hard on a new release, and I'd like to highlight some of the capabilities. Now, one of the first things you'll notice is the new ribbon. It's well designed, it's intuitive, and it makes ArcGIS Explorer very easy to use. Now, in the background here, I'm using Bing Maps. I'm using the Bing Aerials, the same that Christoph just talked about a few moments ago. And these are among the base maps which I can access from the new ArcGIS Explorer base map gallery. So here I've accessed the Bing roads. And we can also extend this gallery with our own base maps. Here what I've done is I've added three of my own base maps, including world population. Now as I zoom out on my world population base map, you'll notice something else new with Explorer. We now have an integrated 2D, 3D display. Obviously, I am in 2D mode, and I'm also in a web Mercator projection. Explorer supports all the projections and transformations as ArcGIS Desktop. Now, I can toggle modes on the fly, and when I do, you'll see that this data has been authored in 3D, and I can see the country polygons extruded based on their population value. Now, one of the unique and defining characteristics of ArcGIS Explorer is that it's meant to work with your GIS, works directly with your data without conversion, and new in this release is support for layer packages. Layer packages encapsulate ArcGIS desktop cartography with the data in one easy-to-share file. All I need to do is turn it on, and I see the same cartography as authored in desktop. Layer packages are also great for sharing. And here I'm looking at the shared results of a GIS analysis, which shows me high slope areas that are near major roads. Now, ArcGIS Explorer is customizable without programming. It also has an SDK that we can use to extend its capabilities. Here I have a number of add-ins which extend Explorer's capabilities. And I'm going to use one which allows me to digitize a line across the surface, and when I click to place it, it communicates with the waiting ArcGIS server geoprocessing service. So ArcGIS server does the heavy lifting and returns the result. <laughs> also new are presentations. You can see I've opened up my presentation slide window, and I've captured several slides, including titles. What I'd like to show you now is a finished presentation which I authored earlier. So when I start this presentation, we have what looks like a PowerPoint slide. And indeed, I created this in PowerPoint and added it to Explore. To advance to the next slide, I click the right arrow or I hit the space bar on my keyboard. Now what I've done here is I've created a presentation which I intend to show at our city planning meeting. So we'll zoom into our city, we'll add a couple of layers. And up until now, it's looked pretty much like PowerPoint, but there are some very key differences. One is that I have live ArcGIS Explorer running in the background, so I can grab control of the application and begin to explore during my presentation. Also, because I'm accessing live enterprise data, I can click on features to get new information, like this information about my tax lots, and I've also integrated some live webcams throughout the city, which allow me to look at current traffic conditions. I have a slide previewer. I can also use that for navigation. And what I'd like to do next is transition to another presentation. This is a little bit different. In this case, I'm going to be highlighting Yellowstone National Park. And in the background, I've switched base maps. We're also using some of the title capabilities within the presentation, and I'm showing the Yellowstone Park boundary. Here's a layer package, which includes a legend, and we'll zoom in to the Norris Geyser Basin. Here I've integrated some rich media content. This is a website which allows us to look at some of the geysers and hot springs which are located throughout this basin. Next, we'll move to the upper geyser basin, and this area is special because this is the home of Old Faithful and also the Old Faithful Inn. You can see the inn here. This is a KMZ file which I've accessed. 
and also I've created a connection to the Park Service webcam. We'll see if we're lucky and can catch an eruption. Um, it doesn't look like the geyser is going off right now, but this is the Park Service live webcam. Now imagine this as an educational tool. What a great technology to use for educators. Here I've leveraged some of the rich media content that is published on the Yellowstone National Park website. We're looking at a flash animation that explains why the Yellowstone hotspot might have occurred. And here's another flash animation. This one is interactive. I can click the green button to take a look at how the hotspot has moved and I can understand more about where it's been throughout geologic time. I've only had a few moments to scratch the surface of ArcGIS Explorer, but I'm sure you'll agree with me that it's GIS for everyone. Thank you very much.